ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى قد قيض للعربية رجالا الله سبحانه وتعالى he has made men and individuals who have stood up to serving the Arabic language the way it deserves for it to be served individuals who came who worked to making sure that the Arabic language is not played around with and that it's not distorted علماء ربانيين scholars who are elite who made the Arabic language not only protected but also brought it to our attentions and brought it close to us in a very simplistic easy manner and from those ulama are a shaykh Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid rahimahullah ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him this great noble scholar Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid he has left so many beneficial works and so many beneficial books ومن هذه المصنفات and from these books he has left behind is التحفة التحفة السرية بشرح المقدمة الآجرومية he has left that book behind which is the explanation of Al-Ajrumiya Inshallah Ta'ala today is the first lesson in explaining the Tuhfatu Saniya with the Ajrumiya in it so Inshallah Ta'ala what we're going to do is we're going to explain the Tuhfatu Saniya and we're also going to explain the Ajrumiya both together Bi'idhnillahi al-Kareem Brothers and sisters فَإِنْ كَانَ عَمَلِي صَوَابًا If the actions which uh, I am doing, which is to explain this book, if it's right, then فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَحْدَهُ It's only from Allah that I got it right. وَإِنْ كَانَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ And if you find deficiency in my explanation, or you find mistakes, فَالْأَمْرُ كَمَا قِيلَ The matter is as it was said before. وَإِنْ تَجِدْ عَيْبًا فَسُدَّ الْخَلَلَا If you find shortcoming in my explanation, then inshallah ta'ala cover that shortcoming of mine. قَدْ جَلَّ مَنْ لَا عَيْبَ فِيهِ وَعَلَى Noble is the one who has no deficiency who is high, meaning Allah. Allah is the only one who has no deficiency. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is high. But as for us, deficiency is always present in us. Brothers and sisters, we will not uh, waste more time. We will go into the book straight away inshallah ta'ala. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. So inshallah ta'ala, O oh students of knowledge, you can benefit two things from this inshallah. The first thing you're going to benefit is, you're going to learn Ajrumiya with the explanation of Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid. And also, you can do the dabd. You can place the dabd, the harakat, and do tashkil on your nuskha. Where the dhamma should be, where the fatha should be, where the kasra should be, inshallah ta'ala, as I read along. So inshallah ta'ala we're going to start from the beginning. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salamuhu ala ibadihi alladhina astafa. Hadha sharhun wadihu al-ibarati. Zahiru al-isharati. Yani'u al-thamarati. Dani al-qitaf. Kathiru al-as'ilati wa al-tamirinat. The shaykh started by saying... In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. Alhamdulillah, he praises to Allah. Wa kafa, and he is enough and suffices us. Wa salamuhu, and peace is on ala ibadihi, his slaves. Alladheen astafa, those in which he has chosen. So the prophets. Hadha this, sharhun, its explanation. Wadihu al-ibarati. The, the words that are used, the terminologies are clear. 
Zahirul Ishara, the pointing or the the points that are being brought out are clear. Yani Uthamarati, the fruits are ready. It is not that the crops have not reached its time, but it's it is fully developed. Kathirul Asilati Wat it has a lot of questions and it has exercises. Qasattu bihi zulfa ila Allah ta'ala bi taysiri fahmi al-muqaddimati al-ajrumiyya ala sigar al-talabati. I have intended to reach to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala by making the understanding of the muqaddimati al-ajrumiyya. Making it Easily understood to who? Ala sigar talabah, the young students of knowledge. So we understand from there that this book is from a, is for a beginner. It is for a beginner. Lian hal babu, because muqaddimat al ajrumiya is the door. Ila tafahum al arabiyat in understanding the Arabic language. Alati hiya lugha tu sayyidina. That which is the language of our master. Wamawlana, our master. Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walugatul kitab al aziz. And it's the language of the Quran. Wa arju, and I hope. And astahiq bihi ridha Allah, that I deserve, because of my efforts, I deserve the, Allah to be pleased with me. فَهُوَ خَيْرُ مَا أَسْعَى إِلَيْهِ Because Allah is the best in which I strive to. رَبَّنَا Our Lord عَلَيْكَ تَوَكَّلْنَا On you we rely on. On you alone we rely on. وَإِلَيْكَ أَنَبْنَا And to you alone we come back to. وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرُ And to you is the final ending. Everything's going to come back to you. رَبَّنَا Our Lord رَبَّنَا اغْفِلْ لِي Oh Allah forgive me. وَلِوَالِدَيْ are my parents وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ and the believers وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ and the female believers يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْحِسَابِ the day that we are accounted in front of Allah the day of judgment كَتَبَهُ it was written by الْمُعْتَزُّ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَحْدَهِ the one who finds honor in Allah alone محمد محيي الدين عبد الحميد المقدمات المقدمات تعريف النحو موضوعه ثمرته نسبته واضعه حكم الشارع فيه إن شاء الله تعالى this is an introduction we're going to take the definition of نحو the, the topic what it deals with the fruit and the outcomes that a person gets um, grammar in accordance to other subjects where it falls Wadi'uhu, the one who placed it. Hukmu shari'i fihi, the ruling that it has. Ta'rifu nahwi, what is the definition of grammar? At-ta'rifu, kalimatu nahwin, the word nahu, what is the definition? Tutlaqu fi lugati al-arabiyyati ala iddati ma'anin, the word nahu, it is used in the Arabic language in different meanings. Minha, from those meanings are what? Al-jihatu, direction. Direction. So the word nahu is used for direction. Taqulu, you say, Dhahab to I went. Nahwa fulanin, ay jihatahu. I went to the direction of so-and-so. Nahwa fulanin means the direction of so-and-so. Ay jihatahu. وَمِنْهَا and from it is الشِبْهُ وَالْمِثْلُ The other meaning that it also carries is الشِبْهُ وَالْمِثْلُ شِبْهُ means like, resembles For example, you would say تَقُولُ مُحَمَّدٌ مُحَمَّدٌ نَحُ عَلِيٍّ أَيْ شِبْهُهُ وَمِثْلُهُ He is like him, he resembles him Muhammad is like Ali So the word nahu, it carries the meaning al-jiha, direction. It also carries the meaning which is al-shibhu wal-mithlu, like. 
That is what it's meant linguistically. It is also referred to according to the scholars. وَتُطْلَقُ كَلِمَةُ نَحْوٍ فِي اصْطِلَاحِ الْعُلَمَاءِ It is referred to the word نَحْو according to the scholars as to mean. This is the technical meaning now. What does the scholars of grammar, what do they understand the word نَحْو? Are they going to understand it as jiha? Or are they going to understand it as shibh wal mith? No. This is what it means to them. It, it means عَلَى الْعِلْمِ بِالْقَوَاعِدِ الَّتِي يُعْرَفُ بِهَا أحكام أواخر الكلمات العربية في حال تركيبها من الإعراب والبناء وما يتبع ذلك It means it's a knowledge which the person learns in this principles principles of what? The ending of the word in the Arabic language when it's put into a context when the word is put into a context or is put into a sentence what that letter, the last part of that letter, it's changing, knowing the rulings and principles revolving it. If it's i'rab, if it's bina, or anything that follows it. So this is what it is. It's a print, it's a not field. Now when you go in, the ending of the word, when it's put into a context, you will know. Uh, you will know uh, what it is and why has it changed because you have the qawa'id, the principles that allow you to, that tells you that this is a fi'il, this is a fa'il, this is a maf'ul bih, and each one has its what? Each one has its uh, sign. Those signs are either i'rab or bina. So now what I want you to all understand is that grammar deals with what, brothers? Grammar deals with the ending of the word. Who's the one who deals with the middle of the word? Sarf. Ulama al sarf. They are the ones who deal with the front and the ending. The beginning and the middle. Sorry, the beginning and the middle of the word. Who are the ones who deal with it? Ulama al sarf. The scholars of Nahu, what do they deal with? They only deal with awakhir al kalimat al arabiyya. The last wording of the letter. What is it? Is it Mu'arab? Is it Mabni? If it's Mu'rab, Mu'rab on what? That's their job. And why? Okay? That is what it means, okay? That was, that's what it means. That's the first point. Ta'rifu nahwi we finished that. Mawdu'uhu. What does this field deal with? Or what does it, what's it about? Mawdu'u nahu. If somebody asks you, what does grammar deal with? This is the answer that you give. Wa mawdu'u ilmi nahwi. Wa mawdu'u. علم النحو grammar the top it deals with what الكلمات العربية first of all it deals with the Arabic language where the Arabic words so النحو here it doesn't deal with any other language it's the Arabic language word good من جهة البحث from the angle of researching عن أحوالها المذكورة it's situations that it goes through so, for example, you see the word what? You see the word ضرب زيد رأيت زيدا مررت بزيد Look at زيد. He went through what? Three different situations. ضرب زيد محمدا ضرب زيد The second one is رأيت زيدا The third one is مررت بزيد Look at زيد. One, one time it's what? One time it's halatul raf. One time it's halatul nasb. And one time it's halatul jar. Three different situations. Why? Because the place determines it. The situations are different. One time it's the subject. One time it's the object. And one time there is a particle before it that makes it become a, that makes it become a jar. Those are qawaid and situations that it goes through that you as a student of knowledge are going to learn. Very good. Athamara, what is the fruits? If I study grammar, what fruits or what, what, what comes out of it for me? Wathamara to ta'allum ilmi nahwi. The fruits that you get from learning the Arabic language is Siyana to lisani anil khata if il kalam il arabi. It is to protect your tongue from mistakes in speaking the Arabic language. So learning grammar. 
helps you and aids you to stay away from doing mistakes when you're speaking the language. Good, that's one. That's number one. That's number one. Number two. وَفَهْمُ الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ وَالْحَدِيثِ النَّبَوِيِّ فَهْمًا صَحِيحًا And it also gives you understanding of the Qur'an and the prophetic tradition, a correct understanding. Meaning, you will understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah the, a correct way. If you learn the Arabic language. Ah. So learning the Arabic language, brothers and sisters, what does it give you? Learning the Arabic language gives you the ability to understand what Allah really wants from you. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he's commanding you, alayhi salatu wasalam. The Shaykh then says, أَلَّذَيْنِ هُمَا أَصْلُ الشَّرِيعَةِ الْإِسْلَامِيَّةِ وَعَلَيْهِمَا مَدَارُهَا They both are. Who's they? Who's ref- who? The Kitab and the Sunnah. أَلَّذَيْنِ أَلَّذَيْنِ is ism? Ism mawsool. The ism mawsool is tathniya, is two. أَلَّذَيْنِ the two. Who are the two? Al-Qur'an Kareem wal hadith Nabawi. Both of them are what? Huma aslu sharia. They are the fundamental huh, thing of the sharia. The sharia, all of it stands on the kitab and the sunnah. Wa alayhim, wa alayhima. And on both of them, meaning the Quran and the sunnah, both of them, madaruha, the religion revolves around. Madaruha means what? It revolves around it. So, by learning the Arabic language, you're going to understand the asal, which is the kitab and the sunnah. Which the whole religion revolves around. Very good. So those are the two benefits he mentioned. There are many more, but those are the two most important reasons. Well, Idalika, some of the Salaf, they used to say that anybody who reads a hadith, he reads a hadith, and you don't pronounce it <coughs> grammatically correct. You get it wrong. You can fall under the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Anyone who lies about me deliberately, let him prepare his place in the hellfire. So it's as though you have lied upon the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Very good. نِسْبَتُهُ What is it in comparison to the other fields? وَهُوَ مِنَ الْعُلُومِ الْعَرَبِيَةِ It is from the sciences of the Arabic language. The Arabic language, so where does the nahu fall under? In comparison to, the, where, where, where do we put it? We put it under, we put it under عُلُومُ الْعَرَبِيَةِ The Arabic sciences. How many sciences does the Arabic language have? Twelve. Twelve. And nahu is only one of them. Are you with me? Nahu is one of them. Balagha, which is three types. Ilmu al-bayan, ilmu al-badi' and ilmu al-ma'ani. And then sarf. And then qawaf wal-qawafi wal-urud. Al-urud wal-qawafi. And all of them, they are sciences. Huh? They are sciences. Qawa'id al-imla, al-khat, kitaba. All of them. Al-khitaba. All of them are sciences that fall under the Arabic language. So, nahu, grammar, is, it falls under Ulum al Arabiya, the Arabic sciences. It's one of them. And it's the most important one. And Nahu is the most important one. Wadi'u who who placed this subject? Who put it down? Who put this field of the Arabic language down? Well Mashur, what is well known is Anna Awala Wadi'in li ilmin Nahwi. The first person who placed the Arabic language is huwa Abu Al Aswad al The first person who placed it is Abu Al Aswad al By whose command? Bi Amri Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib radi Allahu Taala anhu. By the command of who? By the command of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ali ordered Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali to write it. Now, here the question arises. So if Abu Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali was the first one to write it before him, were they not speaking the Arabic language? We will say, na'am, they were. But they were speaking it as a, 
a, a knowledge or a language which, which, which was their own language. They knew it out of nature, meaning they just knew it. They didn't need to know that what they are saying here is a fi'il and that is a fa'il and that is a maf'ul and bi. They didn't require for somebody to come and to say to them, this is a mubtada, this is a khabar, this is a fi'il, this is a fa'il. They didn't require that at all. They did not require that at all. But the poet he said, لَسْتُ بِنَحْوِيٍ يَلُوكُ لِسَانَهُ I am not a grammarian where my tongue has to follow a grammar that was set by somebody. Hey, what are you? وَلَكِنِّي سَلِيقِي Saliqi is a person who is, the language is mine. This is a Bedouin. وَلَكِنِّي سَلِيقِي I am a Saliqi. أَقُولُ I will say it فَأُعْرِبْ Based on my saying, it will be grammatically correct. That's what the poet said. Uh, so what it means is that I could speak the language without having to be told Akhi, this is a dhamma, say it like this, this is halatul raf, this jumla is jumla istinaf, no, I didn't need that. All of that he didn't need. He was there now. وَلِذَلِكَ الْمَرَاقِ السُّعُودِ What did he say? He said, وَأَوَّلُ مَنْ أَلَّفَ فِي الْكُتْبِ مُحَمَّدِ بْنُ الشَّافِعِ الْمُطَّلِبِ وَغَيْرُهُ وَغَيْرُهُ كَانَ لَهُ السَّلِيقَ مِثْلُ الَّذِي لِلْعُرْبِ مِنْ خَلِيقَ وَأَوَّلُ The first person who authored أصول الفق was who? Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i وَغَيْرُهُ أَنْ أَذْنَنْ شَافِعِي which were those who were before him كَانَ لَهُ السَّلِيقَ The matter was السَّلِيقَ I mean it was natural for them مِثْلُ الَّذِي The likes of the Arabs when they came to the Arabic language مِثْلُ الَّذِي لِلْعُرْبِ مِنْ خَلِيقَ The Arab man would just speak and would grammatically get it right and that isn't hard for us to believe because we probably speak a language right now huh? And if somebody spoke it incorrectly, if he spoke incorrectly, we will know he got it wrong. But if you were asked, why did he get it wrong? You probably can't tell him it grammatically. Mm -hmm. So, so what do we mean by Abu al-Aswad al Dual? He placed it. We say, Ka'ifanin mustaqil. That's what we have to say. A subject that is known as grammar, which has principles and rules and regulations to be followed as a subject. He was the first one to put it down like that. Just like Usul al-Fiqh was natural for the Sahabas. But they didn't know something. If the Sahabas wouldn't know what Usul al-Fiqh means. Because for them it was what? They didn't need that. That was put for people who came later who were foreigners to the language or were foreigners to the, to the religion. Or even the, uh, the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay? And back based on the Sahabas and the way the Sahabas lived and the Tabi'een lived was that they based their religion on what Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said. Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnaakum min dhakari wa unsa wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. So they, they would marry one another. As long as you have taqwa, you're v-man, you're a righteous person, it doesn't matter what country you're from, they will marry their daughters after you. So what happened was the Arabs started to mix with foreigners. And so the foreigners were becoming more and the language, what was happening to it is it was getting distorted. It was getting tainted. So then there was, a re there was a need and there was a haja for principles to be put in place so that it doesn't get mixed up. So it doesn't get mixed up. So Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, um, who is the fourth khalifa and the Prophet's cousin, he ordered Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali to write grammar. And the name Nahu, it came from the statement that Ali said to Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali. Ali ibn Abi Talib told him to write Ism, and then he told him Fi'il, and then, and then after that when he, and Harf, and when he told him that, he said to him, and go according to, according ala hadha nahu, on that direction, go on the, according to how I mentioned it. So it became what? Nahu. The name was taken, it was placed in the subject. That's the reason why that subject is used as Nahu. Because Ali ibn Abi Talib said to Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali, go according to the direction or the way I'm going right now. He set him a couple examples. And he said, Abu al-Aswad, carry on like that. Hukmu mm al-Shari'i -hmm. fihi. Mm -hmm. What does the Sharia, what ruling does it have? What, what's the hukum of the Sharia pertaining to grammar? Hukmu al-Shari'i fihi. وَتَعَلُّمُهُ فَرْضٌ مِنْ فُرُوضِ الْكِفَايَاتِ Learning grammar for it is what? It is fardun, it's an obligation, which is what? مِنْ فُرُوضِ الْكِفَايَةِ It's an obligation which is 
obligatory on the Ummah as a whole, not individually. The Fardu Kifaya we studied in Usul al Fiqh. We said Fardu Kifaya means what? Ida qama bihi ba'd sakata sakata an al baqin. If some people stand up to do it, it is lifted from the it is lifted from the rest. If some people stand up for it, then it's lifted from the the rest. So this is what ilm al is like. It's fardu kifaya. Not every single person in the ummah have to learn it, but within the ummah there has to be a group of people who who take on the responsibilities. Okay. Warubba the sheikh said, and it could possibly be, be it could be possibly sometimes. تعين تعلمه على واحد فصار فرض عين عليه. It could sometimes be, ها? Huh? It's فرض عين. ورب تعين. Sometimes it can individually be obligation, individual obligation. تعلمه learning it على واحد or every individual فصار فرض عين عليه. And so it becomes a فرض عين on him. It becomes a فرض عين on him. Who is that person? It can be فرض عين on. It can be a person who's embarking on learning the religion. If a person wants to be a student of knowledge, or he wants to be a mujtahid, or he it is fardu ayn on him, it could be fardu ayn on him. <coughs> that which we just mentioned is an introduction put by Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid. The book starts from here, inshaAllah ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most gracious. قال المصنف the author said who is the مصنف وهو he is so the who when we say مصنف مصنف sorry مصنف مصنف means author مصنف means the one who authored the book who authored the أصل the book the original book that's been explained which is مقدمة الأجرومية who authored it this individual whose name we're going to mention إن شاء الله تعالى وهو أبو عبد الله Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Dawood al-Sinhajiy al-Ma'roof ibn Ajrum. His name is Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Dawood al-Sinhajiy al-Ma'roof. He is known as what? Ibn Ajrum. He was known as. He is well known as what? Ajrum. Wal-Mawlud. He was born fi sanati the year when the year was. 672 Hijri he was born. Ithnataini was sabi'ina was timi'atin. And it's important, brothers, that I, I bring to your attentions. When we read the Arabic dates, read it how the Arabic language is written. In the Arabic language, we write from the right to the left. So when we read a date, we should read it like that, each word like that. So it's written like this. So we say Ithnatain, which is two. Was sabi'ina, which is 70. Then was sitmi'ah. Some people read it as what? They read it as what? Ithnataini. Huh? They say uh, sitmi'atin. Sorry, they say sitmi'atin. 600. Huh? So they say 600 first. Sitmi'atin. Was sab'ah. Sitmi'atin. Was tnaini. Was sitin. So they say 600. And two of 70. Something like that. That's how they read it. And that's incorrect. Because that's going according to the kuffar, the way they read their ones. We read it what? By saying, إِثْنَتَيْنِ وَسَبْعِينَ وَسِتْمِئَةِ He died when? وَالْمُتَوَفَّى فِي سَنَةِ The year he died. Hey, let's read this one. ثَلَاثٍ وَعِشْرِينَ وَسَبْعِمِئَةٍ مِنَ الْهِجْرِيَةِ مِنَ الْهِجْرَةِ النَّبَوِيَةِ And he died the year 600, uh, sorry, 723. He died 723. That's the author of the book that we're studying, which is Ajrumiyyah. It's called Muqaddima. Pay attention. It's called what? Muqaddima al Ajrumiyyah. Why is it called Muqaddima? Because it's an introduction. And then, inshallah ta'ala, later we're going to take Mutammimah al Ajrumiyyah, which completes it. Qala, he said. So who said this? Who's Qala that, that we're reading here? The Qala here is Al-Imam al Ajrumi. He said, Al Kalamu, speech is. A speech is what? So pay attention. The kalam is how many times, for it to be a kalam, it has to have how many things? It has to have four things. It has to be utterance. 
al murakab it consists of more than it consists of more than one word al mufidu it has to benefit bil wad'i it has to also be placed ah it has to be placed and I will explain each one, inshallah, by the statement of who? Um, Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid.